Hey everybody, welcome back to Real Life Fishing. And in this episode, uh, we're going to go through uh, some of what I consider to be the, the more useful um, and or the, the more obscure features. Um, stuff that a lot of guys don't seem to know about for whatever reason. Um, you know, so there, there's a lot of settings uh, in these graphs, right? Uh, I mean, tons of them. I, I went to a full day long training uh, on just the Helix units twice. Uh, and I still don't remember everything that these things do, right? But uh, they're, they're complicated to say the least. But uh, because of that, uh, they, they really are quite feature packed. So in order to take advantage of all of the features of them, you know, and, and really get every dollar's worth out of them, uh, it pays to, to learn a bit about them. Of course, uh, you know, one of the, the one of the ways a guy can do that is to uh, read the manual, right? But nobody likes to do that, right? It's, it's long, it's boring, right? But it's one of the first things you need to know is uh, if you go into the menu here, if you don't see some of the settings that we're talking about, uh, go under setup. There's two user modes, right? There's custom and there's angler. When you take one of these out of the box, by default, it's in angler mode, right? So just look at the options that are available on the setup page and then watch when I switch it back to custom. There's more stuff, right? Now there's an arrow down here. Look at all this additional stuff that wasn't there before, right? So make sure that you, uh, you change that to custom so that you can really take advantage of all this stuff, okay? So we're gonna start on this graph over here, right? So um, <clears throat> this is that lake that I showed you um, that I made the, the map for. Uh, we were actually out on there again um, just last night and uh, myself and uh, a buddy from Thankful Outdoors, uh, we were out there fishing and, you know, ran a little bit more of the lake and fished some more. I had a pretty good night. Um, you know, we were out about uh, two and a half hours and, and we brought home uh, a dozen crappies. So, you know, nothing, nothing that's going to go on the wall, but uh, plenty enough to eat. So, Right, but so we've got some some really nice, uh, you know, one foot contours, um, you know, stacked in over here. Right, so this this is what uh, a default map looks like. I think I've got this on uh, on color palette three, right? But uh, you know, so you're you're tearing around the lake on plane, whatever. You know, you you gotta you gotta pay attention to to what you're looking at, right? You gotta look at numbers and all this kind of right. Nobody nobody wants to do that, right? So uh, the first thing I like to do. Um, and I undid all this on the graph to show you guys, but the first thing that I like to do uh, is go into the menu and uh, go over to your hummingbird chart tab and go down to um, shallow water highlight, right? And I like to set this on five feet uh, because in Wisconsin, um, you know, there's, we got a lot of flowages um, and so there, there tends to be a lot of stumps and stuff. And so, uh, in, in, in boulders, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. So uh, whenever the, the graph shows you know, the map shows less than five feet. Uh, I like to be a little more careful because I, I could hit a stump and that'd be a bad day, right? So now what the graph does is uh, it will color anything five feet or less red, right? So you see the shoreline uh, of that lake there is red and uh, quite a bit of this, uh, this lake here is red as well, right? And these two lakes are connected, but um, so quite a bit of that, right? And, and you can set that, whoops, sorry about that, guys. You can, uh, you can set that to whatever depth you like. But again, you know, I, I like five feet just because uh, it, uh, it, it suits me and, and the part of the country that, uh, that I fish in and, and the way the lakes are here, right? So um, the next thing that I like to do, though, is uh, depending on the lake that, I, that I'm on uh, and what I'm fishing for and what that lake structure looks like is uh, I like to use depth highlight as well. Right, so back on that same uh, that same page, right? So depth highlight. Um, <clears throat> when I'm fishing for crappie, I'll set this on, on this lake anyway. I'll set this to uh, uh, 12 feet, and then plus or minus two feet. Right. So what that means is uh, minus you know, 12 minus two feet. So anything from 10 to 12 plus two feet, being 14, it's going to color green for me. And so this is what that lake looks like now 
uh, with that highlight set, right? So anywhere that's um, 12 to 14, it's gonna color that green for me, right? And so then I can pretty quickly just come in here and look and say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm looking for that, that green area that's up against a, a stacked shoreline, right? Like over here, right? I want a I wanna 12 to 14 foot that's, that's pretty close to shore, right? And I want that because close to shore, there's a lot of trees that are overhanging, right? Or trees that have laid down, right? Coming off the shore, they've, they've fallen or whatever, right? So they're hanging out in the lake. And uh, crappies like that, that little bit deeper water uh, out here, these, these Wisconsin crappies, uh, but they also still like some structure, right? And so uh, unless there's some type of crib or something in the lake, which, you know, I, I've got some cribs marked on here, but, um, you know, so last night when we were out, uh, we caught a few uh, right over here, whoop, right over here, right, where this, uh, this drop is all stacked up. There's some, some nice overhanging stuff there. And then across the point, starting right about here and then um, all the way down the shoreline uh, right about to this corner down here uh, right where it's kind of starts narrowing up uh, that's that's where we got most of them um, and it's a pretty good night but uh, you know that that depth highlight and the uh, the shallow water highlight those are those are two big ones for me um, another one that can be important is uh, the uh, GPS settings Right, so if, uh, if you're in an area um, and you're, you're having difficulty getting solid GPS readings, um, you can come in here under setup. Oh, this is an angler, I gotta look at that, silly me. Um, so you come in here and right there, GPS GLONASS, right? So uh, by default, the, uh, the helixes will use the U.S. constellation of, uh, of GPS satellites. Uh, the GLONASS constellation is the uh, Russian GPS uh, satellite constellation. Uh, and there's actually more of them up there than there are the U.S. constellation. Uh, so you can turn that on. Um, it'll slow down the unit just a little bit. It makes it work a little bit harder uh, because there's more, uh, there's more satellites to, to read from. Um, but you know, so if, if you wanted to see if you were having difficulties with that, you can go and look at uh, uh, the, the GPS diagnostic view, right? So right here, you can see uh, I've got a, a pretty decent lock from, from a number of, uh, of satellites, um, right? And so this is uh, external, external GPS, right? Um, the, the puck that's on the back of the boat, of course. Um, and then that'll tell you your... Uh, your estimated error and uh, uh, how fast you're going, of course, and, and some other stuff. But, uh, yep. So, there we go. Put that. Uh, look at that. Uh, lost my map now. I had scrolled all the way up there, right? So, if we come over to here then, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the settings that I like on here, um, I've already got turned on, right? So, these, uh, these distance lines on the imaging, right? So I've got this set for 75 feet right and 75 feet left. These distance lines that are on here, right? You can't control, um, you know, the, how far apart those lines are. It's gonna put up three lines uh, and the distance between the lines is basically gonna be determined by, you know, whatever your, your max distance is, right? Then you'll see these change, right? So, so you'll, have to, you'll have to kind of guess a little bit, you know, if, if you see a mark uh, like in the middle over here, you, you'll have to guess a little bit at it to, to tell. Uh, but those distance lines are not on by default. Uh, and then the same thing with, uh, with the depth lines, right? And, and we don't have any depth to sit in the garage, but you know, the, the depth lines as well, right? These, these are not on by default, you know? So if you're in 20 foot of water and you see a school of bait fish here, you know, it, it's nice to have some type of line to, to give you a, a little bit of a reference to tell you uh, exactly how deep um, those might be, right? Um, so come back in here. Another thing that, uh, that some folks don't know is that, uh, you can choose to hide, um, these, uh, some of these screens here, right? So screens that you don't want to see, you know, like chart instrument view. I don't need to see that. Um, bird's eye view. Actually, I don't know why that's on. I hate that thing. Um, chart, chart. Um, I don't use on this graph. 
So, you know, I must have, uh, I, re I upgraded this and, and or updated the firmware, so this will reset the default. But uh, yeah, so you can come through here and, and pick and choose um, which ones of these you want to be visible and which ones you want to be hidden. Um, so one of the one of the things about this though now is that you guys have seen me now twice use this uh, shortcut button where you hold down view, right? So any view that you pick out of here, um, if you choose to display it and it's currently hidden, it's going to add it to your rotation, right? So keep that in mind, right? Like the GPS diagnostic view was hidden just a moment ago. So if I choose to display this, it's going to change that to be visible, right? And so then as I'm cycling through pressing the view button repeatedly like this, right? I'm going to have to go through that view to, to get back to where I want to be, right? Um, so let's see. So we'll show just the side imaging on here. There we go. So there's side. And then over here, we'll put up side, right? So you can see this one, right? The boat icon is up in the corner and it says right over here. But then this one, uh, it's in the middle and it shows right and left, right? And so the, the reason for that is that, you know, on my favorite view, I've got side on top and then, you know, the, the 2D and the down, the view that you guys just saw. But when I'm running around like this, right, you can change this so that it only shows you one side, right? So here I just want to see the left, right? So now look at how much more room I've got now, right? So I've got the left side image on the left and the right side image on the right. So when I'm driving around looking for structure or looking for schools of bait fish, I can display the, the left side image there and I can display the right side image over here. And I've got a lot more screen real estate, right? So it makes it a lot easier to see. Uh, or I can extend this out farther, right? Because that, that 75 feet, right? If you're, if you're looking at both of them, it's actually 150 feet, right? You've got 75 on the left, 75 on the right. Well, now, I can extend this out, you know, if I'm satisfied with the resolution there, I can extend this out and show 150 over here and 150 over here. And the, the effective amount of real estate being displayed is gonna be the same as 75 and 75, right? Which is 150 across the screen. Um, so that's also really nice. But, uh, right, so now if I go back to my favorite view though, right, which is side on top and, and 2D and down, right, now this is only displaying the left side. So. Uh, that's why I have that set to uh, uh, display both sides. But um, so there's another thing here that in this multiple views, right? So right now the lower pane is being displayed. Um, so to, to get there, you just hit menu once and then switch to the upper, right? And then I want to display both sides again, right? So that when I'm driving around, this is my, my default how I drive around, right? I got a map on the right and I've got uh, imaging data on the left, okay? Um, that's just how I like it, but uh, um, you know, you guys will figure out what works for uh, for you. But remember, um, have this set on uh, uh, custom instead of angler, and that'll allow you to to go through and, and see all of these uh, these extra things in here. Um, make sure you set your time zone correctly as well. That's that's kind of annoying. Uh, and turn on and off daylight savings, all that. Uh, just spend some time, you know, digging through here, looking at stuff. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're not sure what something does, go ahead and, and adjust it. You know, the, the worst that's going to happen is, you know, you'll get things out of whack so far that, you know, it doesn't display correctly or whatever. You start having problems. Uh, just keep in mind, you can always go to, you know, setup and go back down here to, uh, um, where's my restore defaults? There it is. You can always just press that button and restore this back to defaults uh, and it'll be just like you took it out of the box again, right? So you're not gonna hurt it. You're, you're not gonna break anything, right? Just play with it. See what works best for you and uh, you'll figure it out. Uh, I'm sure we'll do, uh, we'll do more videos about these uh, once we get on the water. Uh, you know, we'll start, uh, start shooting some video on the water and um, you know, go through adjusting sensitivity and contrast and, and that type of thing. But uh, we're coming up on 15 minutes here. So I'm going to call this one a night. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned a lot and uh, have a good one.